Hey everyone, it is Terrariums and Tea. I am doing a video today on what I love and hate about orchids. And I'm going to start with what I love about orchids, and maybe you love this too. Um, I really love orchids that have unusual shapes and colors and combinations. Um, I'm very attracted to strange orchids, so like this guy's not in flower yet, but he is a sequ sequential bloomer and this Psychopsis um, has a very unique shape and I love everything about this flower. Um, I love fragrant orchids. So I like orchids that smell nice. I know that there's orchids that smell bad. I know some don't have smell at all and some have a scent that can't be detected by humans. So yeah. I love that orchids are kind of like a surprise, like when they flower, maybe the bloom is smaller or larger than what you thought, maybe has more substance in person. I noticed this a lot with the Vandas, um, if I saw a picture of Vanda online, I didn't really, I didn't see what the pill was, but in person, yeah, I really like them and I love my Vandas and they're probably like one of my favorites because the way they bloom all at once and how big the blooms are and the color and they change color when they first uh, flower they're kind of like this pink color and then it gets darker and darker and then one of them's like a purple color the other one's this tangerine orange which I also love um, I guess I do love the challenge of an orchid because I guess if they just were always in bloom I mean, this guy's always in bloom, but if if there wasn't a challenge in it, I think it wouldn't be as special when it bloomed. It would just be more expected. And so some plants, they, they're harder to bloom, and when they do bloom, it feels like a little accomplishment, even though you didn't put in all the work. It was the plant that put in the work, but yeah. I guess I love the rarity of orchids. I love, like, really tiny orchids. Like miniature orchids, those are my favorite. Um, I like orchids that are impressive in person, and sometimes you don't know which orchids are gonna impress you in person until you see them in person. So, yeah, there's some orchids that I really wanted until I saw them in person, and then I was glad I never bought them because I didn't like the overall look of the plant. Uh, what else? I love that orchids. Um, let me change the view <laughs> so you're not looking at these plants the whole time. Ooh, okay, I'll put you over here. Um, I love the orchids. Let's see. I love all the different uh, climates and conditions orchids can live in. I love that there's not a catch-all. I love the exceptions. I love that you know, some people will give you advice for orchids and it's wrong because it doesn't fit the exceptions. Like some orchids need lots of light, some need very little light, some need no light. Like there's an orchid in Australia that grows underground for part of its life cycle. And that's weird, it doesn't have, <laughs> it doesn't need sunlight. So just weird stuff like that. I love the weird, um, I love that orchids don't all need the same media. Some don't need media at all, like my Vandas, um, some, I think they could also be in like a rock or something, or maybe the pellets, but you'd have to water less, um, yeah, I love that some orchids do grow in, like, soil, kind of, because <laughs> people always tell you, like, orchids don't grow in soil, and then you find, like, a pleone that does, or, yeah, it's just, I love that everyone's wrong <laughs> about orchids. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to get into what I dis dislike about orchids, which I think if you really love orchids, you should click away because you might not like what I have to say. Alright, so now I'm going to talk about my orchid cons, and these are things I dislike about orchids. And my major one is I cannot buy the orchids I want here. So I see people in America, they get the orchids they want. They're usually the ones I want as well. And I get quite jealous because they're not here. The nurseries here don't have them. If I'm lucky, a nursery in Germany might have it. And then it's not bloom size. It's like a seedling or something. 
And then also, it's not worth it because the cost of shipping for two plants is more than those two plants. And I don't want to buy like eight plants. I just want to buy one plant or two plants. I don't want to buy like a truckload of plants. And I can't really find anyone who will, you know, split the cost of shipping with me. So I just haven't bought any orchids lately because of that. Um, I hate really hate viruses and bugs. Bugs I understand though, like I understand that greenhouses have bugs and I think when I got my Stanhopea orchid there was a centipede in there and I was okay with the centipede because I'd rather, I, I was just happy it wasn't mealy bugs, you know, but yeah, I really hate mealy bugs, scale, spider mites, um, just awful. <laughs> um, I hate orchid names that change constantly, so I really hate the scientific names are always changing. I wish they would just make their changes internally and then announce them every five years and then make them that way for five years. So at least you would have five years of that orchid keeping the same name instead of having it change like month to month or whatever. Um, I hate that... I hate trying to figure out how I'm going to water my plants when I go on vacation because I either have to cut my vacation short, or I have to get someone to water it for me, or I have to put it outside maybe, if I'm lucky. Um, that only works in the spring or summer. Um, I have like this little terrarium and it can stay watered for like five days in there, but then after that, like, what am I going to do? I don't know. Um, let's see. I hate orchids that don't bloom. Like sometimes you buy, I have this one plant, it's a Pescatoria, Pescatoria something. It's never bloomed, it just gets bigger and bigger. I moved it around, I changed the watering, I changed the light, I changed everything. I put it in different media, it has just grown more roots and it has never bloomed. So yeah. Um, I hate bad advice from YouTube. This is a big one. And I noticed there's a few channels that have like so many fangirls and I'm not gonna say any names but some of their videos have really bad advice and the fans claim you know so-and-so is an expert they've been keeping orchids for 10 years or whatever and if you point out like some bad videos that person has they'll say oh it's because it's from a bad year and it's like you know what I don't know which years of this youtuber are good years and which years are bad years and I would really appreciate that if they gave bad advice, that they add a disclaimer to that video and say that, you know, they were wrong maybe or they learned something. But I, I don't have time to watch all their videos and go on their journey with them. Like sometimes I just want to find one video that is the same plant that I have or something like that. And I think most of the mistakes I made when I started was because I was following like this one YouTuber and I was following her advice in the media, uh, the plant media she was using and it almost killed <laughs> some of my orchids and I had one orchid, it was on like the brink of death and then I changed it out of the media it was in, I put it in sphagnum moss and it came back to life within a year and now it has like this new fan and it's growing and the leaves are the new leaves are nice, but it still has like those old accordion leaves from when I was taking her advice. And yeah, that's that's the danger of uh, YouTube advice. Like, <laughs> anyway, um, please let me know what your orchid dislikes and likes are. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.